Hey everyone, thank you for coming. Today I'm going to talk about batch verification for statistical zero knowledge proofs. It is a joint work with Guy and Ron Rotterblum, Adam Silfon, and Prashant Vasudevan. So zero knowledge proofs introduced by Goldwasser, Mikali, and Rakov are an amazing idea. And as you all probably know, it allows a prover to convince a verifier of the validity of some statement without revealing any additional information. In this talk, we focus on statistical zero knowledge for which both the zero knowledge and soundness are information theoretic. So our protocol is statistical zero knowledge if it has three properties, the standard completeness and soundness. Know that the soundness is defined also against an unbounded prover. And the zero knowledge requirement is that uh, for every polytime verifier V star, there exists a polytime simulator such that the output of the simulator is really close to the distribution of the messages being sent between P and this V star on the input X. And when I mean very close, I mean that the statistical distance between those distributions is negligible. So we also consider a weaker notion of uh, statistical zero knowledge, which, which is honest verifier statistical zero knowledge, for which uh, the zero knowledge requirement is only against the honest designated verifier. Okay, so, so far we talked about verifying only one instance, but let's say that we want to check that k different statements are all true meaning it wants to accept if all instances are yes instances and to reject if at least one instance is a no instance. Okay, so the naive way to do that is just to run the basic protocol for each input sequentially. However, communication is a key resource in modern networks. Um, and if verifying one instance takes us let's say m bits, then verifying k instances will take us m times k communication bits. So question being asked is, can we verify k instances with less than these uh, m times k communication bits? Okay, so let me briefly mention some prior work on this topic. So using the IP equals P space theorem, we can get batching for every problem in IP. However, uh, with an inefficient prover. Also, this line of work um, of Rottenblum, Rottenblum, and Reingold uh, showed a batching for UP, which is a specific subclass of NP with communication of poly M log K, where M is the witness land. Um, the special property about those protocol is that the prover is efficient. And there are more work showing um, batching uh, with uh, only computational soundness and also under crypto assumptions. And the special property uh, about uh, those protocols is that the communication complexity is only poly log n log k. So in this work, we focus on batch verification for SEK. And our main question is, suppose that some problem is in SEK, so can we verify that k uh, different uh, instances are all yes instances in zero knowledge with non-trivial communication? Meaning can we do batch verification for SDK with non-trivial communication while maintaining the zero knowledge? So we think it is a natural problem and it also can be used for uh, verifying signatures and public keys. And we give a partial positive answer, which will be stated in two slides, but first, Let's recall the model of non-interactive statistical zero knowledge. In this model, um, both parties get uh, the CRS, which is a shared uniform random string. Then, uh, then the prover based on the input X and on the CRS generates um, a proof by and sends it to the verifier. And the verifier based on the X, uh, the CRS and this pi decides if to accept or reject. Uh, okay, so we have uh, here the standard convenience and soundness requirements. And the zero knowledge requirement is that 
uh, there exists a polytime uh, simulator such that for every X, which is a yes instance, the output of the simulator is close to the uh, to the distribution of the CRS alongside this message pi. So now we're ready to state our results. Um, so our main theorem is that for every uh, pi which is in NIZK, uh, every problem pi in NIZK has a, on its verifier SEK batch verification protocol with a non-trivial communication of K plus poly N. And in this talk, we ignore polylog factors. So we show it in uh, two steps. The first step, in the first step, we show a new NIZK complete problem called approximate injectivity. And then we show honest verifier SEK batch verification protocol for this problem of approximate injectivity. So before we dive in and introduce this new problem of approximate injectivity, we start with a warm up of batch verification for permutations. So the input for this problem uh, is length preserving circuit. And we define the yes cases to be circuits that define a permutation and the no cases to be circuits that are far from defining a permutation in the sense of their injectivity, meaning that uh, every, meaning that for the no cases, every image has at least two pre-images. So now we want to construct a batch verification protocol for this problem. So the input is case circuits, and we want to check um, that each and every one of them is a permutation. And the way we think of, uh, of this uh, circuit is uh, as a composition. So now we construct an honest verifier SDK batching protocol, which will go as follows. So first we sample uh, samples X1 uh, and sends um, YK to the prover. And this YK is the composition of the circuit on this X1. Then the prover finds some X1 prime such that the composition of the circuit on this X1 prime give gives us the YK sent by the verifier uh, and it sends it to the verifier and then we check that indeed X1 equals to X1 prime and accept or rejects accordingly. So for showing this protocol is indeed on its verifier SDK, we need to show completeness, soundness and zero knowledge. So we start with completeness and zero knowledge for which all circuits are permutations. So for completeness, uh, know that permutations are invertible and therefore the prover can just invert each circuit in its turn and eventually get the X1 from this YK. Uh, and for zero knowledge, uh, we can uh, construct a simulator that will just uh, sample X1 and compute YK the same as the verifier and uh, just that uh, X1 prime to be this X1. So we get here a perfect uh, zero knowledge. For the no, uh, for the soundness, for the no cases, we consider the first no uh, instance. Um, okay, so even if the prover manages to guess correctly uh, this uh, this yi, meaning uh, the yi, which is the composition of the first i circuits on this x1. Uh, and then, then still this YI is uh, at least two pre-images. Now we know that X1 is sampled uniformly and all the I minus one circuits, uh, the, the first I minus one circuits are uh, permutations and therefore um, XI is also uniform. And therefore the prover cannot guess with probability more than half, which is the correct XI. And each XI here will be translated to a different X1. So in total, we get the soundness of a half and uh, we can also amplify it by repetition. So if the permutation problem was NIZK complete, then we would essentially be done. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So instead, we will introduce a variant of uh, the permutation problem that is NIZK complete. And this variant is the approximate injectivity problem. So 
this uh, problem differs from the permutation problem uh, by two significant uh, ways. So the first difference is that um, the, the circuits are not uh, length preserving anymore. The inputs here are circuits that map inputs of size n to outputs of size m when we think of m as a poly of n. Um, and the, the second difference is that the requirement of the injectivity or non-injectivity is not uh, absolute as in the permutation uh, problem. So here for the yes cases, the majority of the inputs uh, one minus delta fraction of the inputs uh, do map injectively, but uh, for a delta fraction uh, of the input, we let them to be mapped uh, potentially non-injectively. So as far as we know, all the inputs here can be mapped also to the same output. Uh, for the no cases, uh, the majority of the inputs, one minus delta fraction of the inputs, are mapped in a way that every input has a, at least one other input that is mapped to the same output. But we do let a delta fraction of the inputs to be mapped injectively. So later we show that this problem is uh, NISK hard. Um, and now we will, start, we, we will show a, a batching protocol for this problem. So for uh, simplicity of this talk, we uh, focus on the case where delta equals uh, zero. So uh, although it is not known to be an ISDK hard, it still captures most of our uh, main ideas. So our goal for today is to distinguish circuits that are injective from those in which every image has at least two pre-images. So for the permutation, uh, we set every circuit input to be the previous circuit output. But now the output size is not the same as the, as the input size, and therefore, therefore we cannot uh, directly compose. So an idea is to just uh, use hashing and to hash uh, each circuit output to the next circuit input. Um, but while doing that, we still want that each uh, XI will be close to uniform uh, for soundness. From the same reasons, we needed that for the, uh, in the permutation protocol, as uh, we will see also later. So a natural idea is to use extractors. And since uh, each circuit image size is 2 to the n, and each circuit input is of size n, we need extractors that extract almost all entropy. Also, uh, we cannot afford the C to be too long because it will be trans translated later to messages being sent. Luckily, Goswami, Uman, and Vadhan uh, show the construction for extractors that indeed extract almost all entropy and has a seed length of uh, only polylog n. And that leads us to the protocol's first attempt. So in the protocol first attempt, uh, the verify stem samples uh, x1 and uh, k seeds z1 to zk, and computes uh, for each circuit uh, its output yi, and the next circuit's input xi plus one, which is the result of the extractor on yi and the seed zi. Z, then it sends yk and z1 to zk to the prover, and the prover has to find a consistent uh, x1 prime. And when I mean consistent, I mean uh, such a x1 prime that if it uh, performs the same computation as the verifier, it gets the same yk sent by the verifier. So then it sends back uh, this x1 prime to the verifier, and the verifier uh, verifies that indeed the uh, this is the x1 it samples and accepts or rejects accordingly. But we have a problem with this first attempt. And the problem is that even if this uh, extractor given the zi were a random function, then still a constant fraction of the xi plus ones uh, has more than one pre images. And therefore, p, uh, p's chances to get the correct x1 are negligible. And therefore, we don't have completeness. So an idea to solve it is just to give P an additional information about uh, this X1. 
But then we encounter a new problem. Uh, and the problem is that the, the sufficient amount of information we need uh, to give the honest prover so it can um, uh, guess the correct X1 uh, can also help the malicious prover. And therefore uh, we don't have soundness. And the solution for that will be just to use interaction. Uh, in the sense that the verifier will gradually reveal information about the YIs, uh, and now we see how it solves it. So that leads us to the second attempt. Uh, it starts the same, the verifier samples X1 and ZI to ZK and compute uh, YI and XI plus one uh, for every circuit. But then for every I uh, from K down to K, it first sends the YI, then the prover uh, finds some XI prime such that YI equals to CI of uh, XI prime and send this XI prime back to the verifier and the verifier verifies that XI is equal to XI prime and reject if not. And if all the checks pass, checks pass, uh, then it uh, accepts. However, clearly we have here communication overhead. Uh, for K times, uh, the party sends YI and X uh, I prime, which are of size M and N. So this is the trivial communication complexity and we, wa we want be better than that. Um, so soon we will uh, we'll discuss how to solve this communication overhead, but First, let's uh, discuss why this protocol is indeed on its very first statistical zero knowledge. So for completeness, uh, each circuit is injective and therefore the prover can easily guess the correct XI. Uh, for soundness, let's consider again the first no instance circuit, the CI star. So we took care of that, that the input XI star is uh, close close to uniform and we did it by using extractors. Uh, and therefore, peace chances to get the correct uh, XI star given the YI star is uh, at most uh, half. Uh, and for zero knowledge, uh, consider the simulator that generates uh, the Xs, the Zs and the Ys similarly to the verifier and then just set each uh, XI prime uh, as the XI. Uh, but we still have this communication overhead, uh, which we want to solve. Uh, and the way we will do that is by sending hints of YI and XI prime instead of YI and XI prime. So the verifier still sends YK and the prover still sends X1 prime. But for every other YK and X, uh, uh, but for every other uh, YI and uh, XI, uh, the verifier instead sending um, YI will say send hints about uh, YI and ZI. Uh, then the prover will find uh, XI prime such that uh, YI equals to CI of XI prime. So now there can be a, a few YIs that will match the, the, the hint of YI and therefore multiple uh, XI primes. Uh, but it also has to check that the extractor of YI and ZI equals to XI plus one. And that narrows down again the number of YIs and we are good with that. Uh, it's enough for us. Uh, and then uh, in return, the prover sends, uh, instead of XI prime, we just sent a hint about XI prime. So, the hints are generated by a pairwise independent hash functions of a suitable range. Uh, and I won't have time to go over the details uh, of that, but please feel free to con contact me if you have any questions. Okay, so this uh, sums up the uh, batch verification protocol. And what we have left to discuss is why AI is NISK complete. So, Let's recall the entropy approximation problem introduced by Goldreich, Sahai, and Badhan. So they introduced this problem and show it is a NIZK complete. So for us, for showing that the uh, approximate injectivity is NIZK, we just show a reduction from uh, approximate injectivity to entropy approximation. 
and to show that the approximate injectivity is an IZK hard, we show a reduction from entropy approximation to uh, approximate injectivity. So again, I won't have time to go over the details here too, but again, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. So let's summarize the, our result. We show that for every problem in NIZK, uh, it has an honest verified IZK battery verification protocol with the non-trivial communication of K plus poly N. So two improvements for this theorem that are uh, not longer open problems is a protocol uh, which is the statistical zero knowledge and also a protocol which is the public coin. And it was showing a, a recent joint work with uh, Rottenblum and uh, Vasudevan. Uh, mo more open problems are uh, batch verification for SDK and not only to uh, NIZK. Um, communication complexity of only poly N uh, low K. Also constant number of rounds and efficient prover in the sense that the prover can be implemented in polynomial time given access to a suitable uh, witness. So by that, I will end this talk. Uh, thank you very much for coming and for listening. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.